Hello, everybody. Oh, it works. It works. So welcome. Um, my name is Henk. Uh, I've been making drone shows for one and a half years. I adopted it. Uh, it was a part started by Dutch drone shows, which are my current partners. And Bo Gerbrands from the Institute worked on it, and Sibrand Stufel worked on it. And I picked it up and I ran with it. So excited to have you here. Um, we, can, we can go two roads. We can focus a little bit about the real world aspect of it, flying in the air and that kind of thing. Or we can go to the other side and we can focus a little bit on the technical side, on developing stuff for drone shows and the kind of deal. Um, I would kind of like to know your preference so I can like go a certain direction. So for the people who are here for the real world aspect of it, can you just raise your hand? Okay, got a few of that. Cool, thank you. And for the people who are more in the development side and making stuff, can you raise your hand? Okay, a little more, about equal. Cool, I think I got you covered. Um, so let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, I currently work as a drone specialist for Dutch drone shows, um, but Blender goes everywhere. So I somehow ended up in the offshore industry, working on digital twins, um, working on Blender tools, and it's been a really, uh, really fun exercise. And I'm uh, an advisor for a medical um, company that makes uh, explainer videos for medicines. And I'm not making the stuff, they are making it, I'm trying to help them. Um, this isn't necessarily about me, it's more that for some reason, after adopting Blender in my workflow, I've been going anywhere. And Blender seems to, as you all know, go and go and go. So it's everywhere. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm happy for that. I like it. It's, it's a good thing, I think. But it's not just Blender. Um, if you combine Blender with Python, which is a bit of an investment because now you've got to learn programming if you don't know that already and maybe you were in that for the arts, at least I was uh, and still am. And then that takes some time, but the two combined are really something special because Blender is so open that you can go anywhere and you can grab stuff that you like. So um, it's, it's insightful territory, because you, as a creator, I want to make stuff. I like making stuff, but I don't like clicking. At least not redundant clicking. I, want, I, want, I have my workflow, and I, I just want to get the thing done, the, the thing in my mind. So there's nothing bad with clicking. There's no click shaming. If you want to click all day, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but if we can eliminate some of it, and you have better tools, and you can like, just go further, at the end of the day, just want to make your thing. And nobody cares if it was one click or 10 or 15 or 100. So um, to, I had this big idea in my mind, so bear with me. Uh, I just, in one and a half years, I did a lot of clicking. Because drone shows is a lot of clicking and it's a lot of redundancy. And every time when I was doing a lot of clicking, I was like, I should be able to do less clicking. And so I would write an idea and it would work. And sometimes it wouldn't. So this is a, uh, Blender timeline, seems familiar. Uh, I picked some keyframes on it to give you an idea. It's 250 frames long. It's just a standard Blender timeline, just to give you a sense of scale. And this is one. And I'm going to press the green button. And we have 30. That's a lot of work, right? That's a lot of clicking. Um, and then we can go for 100. Now, we, now we're really talking volumes. And then. Um, so far, I've basically made the feature film length timeline-wise, feature film is more complicated, uh, in Blender. Uh, so that's 120 cent, 126 minutes of it. That's a lot. And um, Python and Blender have been really good friends. I could not have done it otherwise. I wouldn't have done it. Um, but this isn't about numbers. This is not necessarily a numbers game. It's about creativity. It's more fun to make your idea than it is to just try it. It's more fun to, to do things. I'm going to check for time. Okay, I think we're good. 
Maybe it runs, or maybe I need to press play. Our story starts like all stories. Small, fragile, and full of wonder. Watching the world with innocent eyes. Soon to be swept off our feet. Because we are not meant to play small. Let us take you on a journey. Look up at the sky and remember. I was kind of afraid that I was going to run out of time. So I just took one really cool piece. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, that means a lot to me. That's cool. Uh, so we're going to go to the next part. I wanted to, to show you something, but I'm too nervous to do technical things right now. So I pre-recorded this. And I was supposed to speak on it. So this is Blender. And um, I just wanted to show you what the viewport looks like when I'm working. So I've been able to tune it just how I like. It's running real time. Um, in the left, you can see what the audience is seeing. In the middle, you can see some uh, objects that I'm using as vectors to control the, the coloring, which is really, really fun to do. Um, and on the right, you have a bit of Python code that's currently doing nothing. I don't need it at this point. I've already done the work. I've spent so much time doing this, so many hours. <laughs> You can kind of get a sense for what a drone show looks like. And part of the trick is to get the drones from A to B in an efficient way, because they don't go so fast. This is the real world. Okay. So what about Python and Blender? Well, drones, you have like 30, 50, 80, 100, 200, and you need to get them from A to B to get the trajectories right. And making that is uh, partially fun to make the shapes, but the, the sorting them so they don't crash into each other is not so fun. So uh, I have all kinds of little scripts that help me sort things, help me check things if the drones are not within three meters of each other. Um, and we're going to see what comes next. So I think this is another video with my voice on it. Let's find out. This is pre-recorded, Hank. And this is a look at what it takes to create more and do less clicking. So. I've got a really short, simple script, hopefully the least scary script you've ever seen, at least that, that I wrote. And it's a function that I called animator. And it's going to make stuff appear. And it's going to do it very regularly. And that's not something that's fun to do as a creative, to have something be from nothing to something, and then offset it and make sure that it's very regular. Um, currently, it's going to have an offset of four, I'm going to scale it from 0 to 1, uh, and then that's going to happen in, uh, let's say, 12 frames. So I select it. This is my input. This is the script that I wrote. And we're just going to run it. And let's see what we've created. All right, that wasn't so bad, right? <clears throat> so it basically goes over every object and it gives them a keyframe. And it goes on and on and on with the right offset. So if you look here, you can see, great. 
we can change the timing as uh, as how we like uh, but let's not do sentences again let's just have a bunch of cubes and let's have it be pretty quick so this is the creative part it's not that difficult um, we're gonna do an increment of two frames we're gonna scale it up by 1.5 or 1.2 and then let's go for how long are they gonna take well six frames six frames is fine maybe go for one even and I'm already thinking like what this is gonna look like and we can just give it a try so um, I'm gonna select the entire collection and I had keyframes on it already so I'm gonna delete those and voila we've created what a script has created like a lot of keyframes and now we can test it out and enjoy it there it goes if we don't like it we can change the timing and it's like it's essentially free to change it right um, so this allows us to uh, or allows me or whoever writes this to create more and to click less so let's uh, let's keep on moving I just wanted to show a super simple example and even this symbol is already pretty powerful okay so this particular example is not directly related to drone shows but I wanted to show like if you just have a script that sets two keyframes, what can you do with it? Does it save you any time? Can you be more creative with it? Um, so now we're going to get a little bit more technical. How does this work in drone shows? Because, I mean, it's fun to do Python and development, but how does this really apply? Uh, so we're going to jump back to pre-recorded Hank, who is nice and relaxed and on a Sunday doing this in the afternoon. Hello everyone, this is pre-recorded Hank once again, and I wanted to give you a chance to uh, to watch a bit of the show, or a show, and not spend the full 10 minutes watching it, but still give you a chance to uh, to get a feel for what's going on live in the Blender scene. And then we'll talk about a little bit of youth of Python to help us out make stuff and click less, be more creative. So as you're looking at it, it looks really simple. It's all working together. There's no chaos. It's just doing exactly what it needs to, when it needs to. I've got the right color. It's fun. It's nice animated. Gonna go to these cool triangles and did some animation on it and then transition to the logo with more cool animation on it and then reorganize things this is also done with a python script this is a lot of work otherwise and now we can safely land the drones and we're done so let's say uh, let's say we want to check the safety of the of the situation and we got to think in terms of the real world with this one we cannot just animate these drones and then call it a day they are uh, not allowed for example outside of this box in the real world this box is given and this these are all real world scales so this box is 120 by 100 by 90 meters and it's placed on the map and we have an idea where the audience is going to be and what they're going to look like because that's what we're going to see here. Now each drone has to uh, adhere to certain uh, requirements. Uh, they're not allowed to go faster than uh, in this case two and a half meters per second sideways. They can go up 2.8 meters per second and uh, or in this case it was two and a half and then go down a little slower otherwise they get unstable um, they can go down by 1.8 meters per second uh, so that's one thing so during the transition a lot of care is taken so that none of these drones move faster than a certain rate 
um, and we use, like I do that with a Python script. And also, this is like a drone cloud, and in this cloud, none of the drones are allowed to go fa like to be within three meters of each other. But I'm looking at a 2D screen here, and it's not easy to see. I mean, you can get a sense for it, and I guess you could do it with geometry nodes to uh, to make it. But in this setup, I've made a Python script, and what it does is, for example, let's pick this drone, and it checks all of its neighbors. So it checks the distance to that drone and that drone and that drone and that drone. And if any of those is uh, lower than the collision tolerance of 3.05 meters, I get a little bit of a warning. And then it moves on to the next drone and it checks all the neighbors once again. And it, if that's okay, it moves on to the next one and it checks all the neighbors. And I've optimized this as far as I can. Um, I used to do it live in the blender scene and go over the timeline um, but i've upgraded the script because i use it so much so now it it loads in all the keyframes and uh, commits it to memory and then it does all its math from memory so it doesn't need to update the blend side the blend file when i move to another frame for example which saves a lot of time so let's run it and see what we get so it's now working on a few frames, it's checking it, and of course this drone show is already finished, so it's, uh, it's nothing going on, it's all done, it's good. Now let's, uh, let's make a collision somewhere. For example, what if we uh, had this one move uh, all the way across the field? That's definitely going to cause some trouble. And see if we can, uh, if we can find it. I might you need to set a keyframe on it. No, we're good. So it already detected it at 3,500 and it says, hey, drone 47, 147 is crashing with 148. And that's a problem because they're less than three meters apart, 2.614, etc., to be precise. And then it's done the additional courtesy of, hey, if you want to fix this, it might be handy to have these selected already. It's going to save a lot of time. So with this, you can just go And see what's going on and then solve it so this script is uh this is not that long but it's pretty complicated and it's got a lot of iterations i, I, I remade it and remade it and remade it just when just to make sure that it's as fast as i can make it and that's worth it because it's it's used so often and these tools help to move forward and there's a lot of tools so there's tools to sort drones and there are tools to place drones and there's tools to clean keyframes. Um, and there's tools to uh, transition paths and there's tools to, uh, to save shapes and all kinds of little things that I've, if they use, if I use them, I keep using them. So um, thank you so much for watching and let's get back to, uh, to the live show. <laughs> I'm not sure how we're for time, so unless I've gotten off the stage, I'll finish the, the presentation. Um, I wanted to give something to you from my hard-earned experiences, if you're going to go for Python. So I would recommend, if you want to have a go at it, learn the basics of Python itself. Just, just because you don't have to do and Blender and Python and all that at the same time. It's, it'll be much easier. And you'll just need three things, variables and lists, loops and functions. Uh, learn Python the hard way was a really good one. A, a programmer friend of mine recommended it. You don't need to do the whole thing, just do part of it and just get in there and have fun with it. <clears throat> If I can do it, you can do it, because I'm dyslexic, and programming is not easy. <laughs> uh, boldly, I wanted to point to the Blender Cloud, this particular tutorial, Scripting for Artists by Dr. Sieplin. Uh, updating F-curves, is a, I found a really good introduction into like getting into the details of Blender. 
Um, so you so you're like beyond the UI, beyond the UX, and just get in like the parts that you want to change. Um, can I just write, let AI write my code? Raise of hands, yes or no? I see two, three hands. Really? Of course you can. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> but uh, ask it to debug your code because that's going to help you learn. And ask it to explain how does how does this work when you get a solution if you don't understand it. So you're going to learn. And then ask why things work that way because it it knows that. So that's helpful. Um, we're we're going to. Are we going to skip this? I'm still on the stage, so we can choose. We can go for one more one-minute video, um, but you can already see what we're going to do. We're going to run the script, and then you can do this yourself. Or we can go for pretty pictures. So raise of hands for pretty pictures. OK, <laughs> got it. Pre-recorded video. So we're going to skip this part, and we're just going to finish up. This is uh, from a few drone shows or parts of it. And if you have any questions, just raise your hand or come after, after the show to me, and I'll, I'd be happy to talk drone shows and anything else. So these are actually shapes. It's geometry. It's vertices that you're looking at. I just happened to replace the geometry. It's really low resolution. It's two chains getting pulled apart, and then the, uh, there's lightning strikes in there, and then it changes color. And then the, the, the favored one, audiences really like it, and the, the glasses come together and they go, ching, but then these are like 100 meters high, so it's kind of cool. And I think that's the end of it. So thank you so much. It's been, a, it's been an honor.